Look at that. Look at that old easy go RXV. It is nasty. Been sitting out here in the weather for no telling how long. Doesn't work. Motor brake is locked up on the back of it. And uh, we had to drag it here a long time ago and just left it because it needs new batteries. There's just a, a lot that it needs. But I'm going to take this in, make it a new project, either turn it into a hunting cart or a neighborhood cart, but we're going to renovate it. This thing is a mess. Flat tires. Wheels won't turn, so when we drug it, still got the leaves piled up, pine straw piled up in front of the rim. It's just a mess. Man. This thing is in bad shape. All the pine straw on that thing. Crazy. Oh, seats rotten off of it. Yep. Batteries are shot. Motor's brake is locked up underneath the back. Seats are all seats are all rotten. Flat tires everywhere. It's a mess, guys. Dash is all nasty. Yuck. Whew, this is going to be a project. All right, guys. I got my work cut out for me. So uh, we'll see what we can do with this. So stay tuned. So once we got this cart in the shop, we dumped the batteries and began to diagnose all the problems that this cart had. We had to take the motor brake off to be able to even roll the cart. And then we began to uh, replace the sensors since this cart has a lot of sensors in it. We started with the throttle sensors. There's two sensors there. There's two sensors by the brake. We replaced both of those just to start our diagnostic process. We also found a little friend up in the front when we took the front hood off. And don't know what that was, but it was cute. Anyway, uh, this is the Dana Her model. Uh, controller it was bad after we tested it as well so that thing is shot probably the worst easy go controller ever used in the earlier models before they went to Curtis this thing took a lot of pressure washing we would, took it to pressure washing about three different times uh, just to uh, get all the different layers of dirt off of this cart we just every time we would take something off we'd find a whole new layer of Georgia clay and had to take it back to pressure washing and just kept on doing it till we got most of the dirt off and uh, we finally got it clean enough to where we could actually start working on it and uh, rebuilding the cart. So I've determined to make this a neighborhood cart and I want to lower the body down two inches to give it a cool roadster look and I'm cutting off the spindle tabs here and re-welding them to a three inch uh, flat bar and I'm going to take this flat bar now and weld that back to the shock mount or spindle mount whatever you want to call it you can see here I raised my line two inches and I'm going to re-tack weld that there make sure everything works properly and then we'll be ready to roll now the rear was easy because all I had to do was to take some two inch square tubing and I put an internal support with a one inch flat bar inside of it just to support it and created a block that would go between the axle and the leaf spring and it raised the axle by two inches. Now the body on this cart needed a lot of work. It had a lot of scratches, gashes, dents, dings, everything in it. And I just went over the whole body and fixed most of it uh, the best I could. But my son works at a local body shop and he put the finishing touches on it. And they did an incredible job of putting a beautiful coat of Nardo gray paint on this cart which is one of my favorite colors especially with a lot of black accents I think this is going to look really good I then dumped these ugly old tires and put on some brand new 14 inch rims with low profile tires and this cart is starting to come together I then used some cardboard to cut out some templates for some stainless plates that I put inside the battery well floorboard to give my subwoofer and my controller a very clean look when you lift up the seat and look in the battery well I installed a brand new rear bumper and a brand new upgraded front bumper along with two new Rockford Fosgate 6.5 inch speakers that run on a Boss Bluetooth unit. This high quality floorboard mat by Extreme gives this a nice clean finished look. I installed a new street legal light kit for the road and a high quality steering wheel for mods. It was a little pricey but it sure gives the cart a nice clean and sporty look and feel. I cut the windshield down, cut out a piece of plexiglass with a jigsaw and had it tinted locally at a professional shop. I think this gives this cart a nice roadster look and feel. 
Remember the rat or bird nest that I had up in this thing in the beginning? Well, now I just have a new rat nest up in the front. It's just a wire rat nest. And this is where I store all the excess wire that I couldn't trim. So it's a good place to store it away and uh, hide it. I organized the dash with all my switches for my rock lights, my radio, my remote battery turn on switch, my hazard lights and my battery monitor. And these rock lights give it a nice touch at night. I installed a high performance lithium battery by Roy Powell. Roy Powell is known for high quality batteries in the golf cart world. I love the quality details in this battery. Even the handles are spring loaded with foam handles so they won't rattle going down the road. This is a 48 volt battery with 105 amp hour capacity so this should give me plenty of range for my neighborhood. This battery is also heavy weighing in at around 100 pounds so make sure you have a little help to put it in. It comes with everything you need for a complete install including the resistor, the remote turn on switch which I love, the battery monitor, the battery leads, the heavy duty onboard charger, and the mounting hardware which I did not need since I just mounted my battery directly to the bottom of my battery well. This battery was shipped quickly and arrived on a pallet and very secure packaging. And lastly, the green Roy Powell logo matches the Navitas green controller. A minor but cool detail. All right, so before I put the body and the seat back on and we go for a test ride, which I'm really excited to do with you guys, uh, I just wanted to walk through a couple of important connection details with a battery like this. And by the way, if you're interested in this Roy Powell battery and you're in the market for a new battery for your cart, you can go check them out on their website for whatever cart you have, 36 volt, 48 volt, 72 volt, whatever, um, they have them all. So I'll leave a link if you wanna go check them out. So when you get this battery, you're gonna get a resistor like this. And when you get this um, resistor, it came with a lot of extra wire. Now this was all connected and I cut it. And I cut it and added new terminals on there like that because I didn't need all this. It's like six feet of wire that I cut off. But if you notice, there's a blue lead and then a black lead. And I'm gonna show you these connections across here closer in detail in a minute. But your blue lead would go here on the blue resistor terminal and then your black lead's gonna go on on your battery negative uh, lead here. So you can cut a lot of this off and just use what you need. Mine is cut perfectly to length because I'm installing my resistor back there in the back of my battery well. Now let's talk about the battery charger real quick. So my body is going to have a charger port on it and I had to buy one of these. This is a 110 just like a normal extension cord. This is a 110 outlet pigtail. And you have some excess wire with this as well. I, I'm not gonna shorten this, I could, but I'm not. I'm just gonna plug it in like that. And then this green wire is what connects to your battery. And there's a connection piece that I already have hooked up right here to my battery that's, that uh, screws on here and uh, charges your battery run through these connections on this Roy Powell battery so that you know what is available on one of these batteries and the options that you have. So let's start on the far side here. On the far side you got the battery positive. On the opposite side you got the battery negative. Then you see this nice blue terminal here. That is for your resistor blue wire. This wire. This wire connect the blue connects to the blue terminal and then the black wire uh, on the resistor goes to the battery negative. Um, now right here, that little button that you see, that is your turn on switch to turn the battery on. You can turn the battery on there and you can turn it off there, but I suggest you install this wire, which is your remote turn on wire and it goes up to your dash and you can turn your battery on up there. So I love that. It just makes it easier instead of having to reach down and find that little tiny button uh, with your battery way down in there under your seat. Now down, down below here is a vent for the lithium battery box. Uh, right here you've got your battery meter and I just really love the spring loaded hinge with the rubber on it. it just gives it a nice touch of quality that that doesn't rattle going down the road. Real quick want to show you the final install. Everything's in there tucked in nice and neat got the controller cover back on the chargers mounted 
resistor mounted in the back, subwoofer tucked away here. All right, so I got the body and the seat back on and just wanted to kind of give you a view of it before we go take a test ride. You can see the lowering of the suspension is lowered down. It just looks clean, I think. I love the way that looks. The wheels are tucked into the fenders perfectly. Wheels stick out just a little bit for a little, a little bit of an aggressive stance. And I got um, tinted tail lights, tinted headlights. And it looks good with this gray color, I think. So anyway, let's jump in and go take a test ride. I have a feeling this thing is super fast. All right, guys, so we're going to take this for a spin. Uh, just to remind you, it's got a stock motor in it, 48-volt um, battery with uh, a maximum output of 315 amps uh, for 30 seconds. So this battery puts out some serious juice. And uh, running a 600-amp Navitas controller, we're going to open it up here shortly and see what it'll do. And I apologize for any uh, wind noise you guys are going to experience, but I'm going to try to uh, record my screen as well. All right, here we go. I'm going to open it up. Twenty-six, twenty-seven, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven miles an hour, thirty-seven miles an hour. Oh, there's a little rubbing. Hey, if you ain't rubbing, you ain't fucking. Well, that's it, guys. We got it up to 37 miles an hour uh, peak. I do have the Navitas controller wide open, so everything was unleashed on this, and that's as fast as this cart will go. Uh, if I were in a lifted cart, I'd, I would be really scared to do that kind of uh, speed. But since this is a uh, lowered cart, it does feel a little bit safer. But still, 37 in a cart is a little sketchy. So I don't recommend it. But anyway, leave me some comments, guys. That's it. Appreciate you uh, watching to the end. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. Take care. See ya.